Hi, Justyna and Kuba. We are a couple from Poland who travels around Europe in search of traces of our prehistory and inspiring places. And everything we find, we share with you in our videos. Today the Blaubeuren in Germany and a deep prehistory in it. Blaubeuren is a tiny medieval town in the Swabian Jura with an interesting and well-organized museum of prehistory. You can see the world-class Paleolithic exhibit there, including the famous Venus figurine from Hochlefels. But more about it in a moment. First, let's take a look around the town itself and look at the blue emerald card spring on its outskirts. Blaubeuren is located in Baden-Württemberg, near Ulm. You can come to this beautiful little town not only by car. You can also come by train to a conveniently located railway station. You can also find comfortable accommodation near the station. We used a fully automated offer on a good price, in this case booked and paid for online. From the station it is literally a few steps to the historic part of the town. In the charming streets many medieval houses with a characteristic half-timbered construction have been preserved. They are well kept and many of them are accommodation places for visitors. You can walk for hours among the quiet, well-kept streets. One of the oldest evangelical seminaries in Germany, with a tradition dating back to the 16th century. The present buildings are late Gothic from the second half of the 15th century. Previously, a Benedictine monastery was here. The origins of this monastery date back to 1085, when a Benedictine abbey was established near the Blautopf Spring. After the Reformation, the Catholic monks left Blaubeuren and the Dukes of Württemberg transformed the monastery into a Protestant monastic school. Today here is Evangelical Theological Seminary. Blautopf. It is the already mentioned Karspring. The spire of the neighboring former Benedictine monastery is reflected in the mystical turquoise blue and emerald water. Emerald hue comes from the plants growing on the sides of the funnel about 22 meters deep. Mysterious blue is the result of the reflection of the light. All long wave colors are absorbed, while the short wave blue is reflected and it is visible. Blautopf means blue pot, perhaps because sometimes the Blautopf boils over. From time to time, the large amount of water pours, pulsates, seethes. It means that huge quantities of water rapidly flows out, even up to 32,000 liters per second. In an ordinary situation, this flow is 2,300 liters per second on average. This cart spring is a source of a Blau River and at a depth of 22 meters at the bottom of a funnel with a mystical, mysterious blue and emerald water, at the bottom of a cauldron which sometimes boils over, there is an entrance to a different world. This world is a cave system with a 14 kilometers of explored and mapped passages and shafts. And the end of the exploration is not yet in sight. Directly under the spring there is a Blautopf Hochle, Blau Hochle cave, the entrance to which is underwater at a depth of 22 meters. 
This cave is completely filled with water for a kilometer and a half. Further on, the divers found dry corridors, often very beautiful. The divers didn't find any prehistoric parietal art. In this case, no surprise. But when you are trying to penetrate the terroquoise depth with your eyes, the imagination revives forgotten rituals and cave sanctuaries, although it is impossible in this abyss. A water mill was built over this fantastic lake in the mid-18th century, after which this picturesque wheel has remained. In the 19th century, it no longer powered the mill, but the hammer in the smithy. Of course, there is also a cafe by the water, where you can enjoy the atmosphere of the place with coffee and dessert. To strengthen the atmosphere of the place, let me tell you that in the former smithy, shows of the former blacksmith are organized from time to time. Additionally, there is a group of enthusiasts in Blyboyren who reconstructs ancient Celtic blacksmithing. And Celts, Druids, mysteries and forgotten rituals also affect the imagination, right? But let's go back 40,000 years because this era is the reason we came to Blauboyren. To find that time, you need to find yourself next to the clock on the tower and enter the museum opposite it. The Museum of Prehistory, named URMU, is located in a medieval building of the Holy Spirit Hospital. Now it is the home of the famous Venus of Hochlefels and many fascinating artifacts dating back to 42,000 years. Each of them is a topic for a separate video, so now briefly. Venus of Hochlefels is the oldest known female figurine made from mammoth tusk. The date that appears in the display case at the Hochlefels cave is 42,000 years old. Only Venus from Barakatram and from Tantan are older than it. Venus of Hochlefels predates the Willendorf figurine by about 10,000 years. 10,000 years it is less than is between us and the end of the Pleistocene. Venus of Hochlefels is 6 cm tall. In place of the head it has a loop, which indicates that it was worn as a pendant. By whom? A man or a woman? It was found near the entrance to the Hochlefels cave, in a layer associated with Homo sapiens. So it probably didn't belong to Neanderthals, who also stayed in this cave. But ultimately, who knows? Neanderthals still lived in Europe. Especially, or otherwise, it is worth mentioning that our statuette is different from all other female figurines. It is not about the lack of a head, because the other origination gravity and Venuses sometimes also have no head, or their head has no face. This significant lack in the representation of men indicates that the figurines are symbolic, which is the first clue on the path of searching for their meaning. Venus from Hochlefels has clearly emphasized sex-related attributes. Other origination gravity and figurines refer rather to abundance, nourishment, maybe proliferation. Note that the Venus of Hochlefels is also clearly symbolic. Some say it might be some kind of prehistoric pornography. I hope you agree with me, given the time it was created and the symbolic absence of a head, pornography is a nonsense. In this layer, the oldest flute on the world was also found. A piece of a figurine, a horse's head, subtle figurine of a water bird, a leather processing tool called a phallus for its ornamentation, a tiny lion man figurine and some beads made of shells and bones. The findings from this layer are the most famous. 
but near the entrance traces of Neanderthal and later Magdalenian culture were also found. The Magdalenian culture is one that is famous for its rock paintings in France and Spain. As you can see, the cave can be visited with a guide, which we did, although no prehistoric artifacts were found in the interior. The excavations in the cave are ongoing, so who knows, maybe more sensational discoveries are waiting for us there? There are more caves with Paleolithic findings in Swabian Jura, but I will leave them for another episode. Flutes. There are three at the Blaubeuren Museum. One carved out of a swan bone, one of a griffin vulture, and one made of mammoth ivory. Visitors can not only see them, but also listen to them. The flutes have a sonic scale similar to the modern one, which is one of the indications that the brains of those people who lived tens of thousands of years ago were similar to ours. One of the flutes was found in the Hochlefels cave. It is about 40,000 years old. Prehistoric people made it from a griffon vulture bone. In the background, you are listening how it sounds. The flutes and their sounds come from URMU, that is from the interesting Museum of Prehistory in Blaubeuren. So, the flute from Hochlefels. It was found broken into 12 pieces in a short distance from the famous Venus. It was made from the radius bone of the griffon vulture that had the largest wingspan among the birds of prey in the region. One end of the bone is deeply scraped at a shallow angle. Experiments have shown that it is not a mouthpiece. Researchers speculate that this instrument may have had an additional mouthpiece. But even without a mouthpiece, researchers managed to play this flute, which is what you hear now. However, the flute from Geisen Klosterly site in the museum is named the Technical Masterpiece. This instrument was also found in many pieces. When they were put together, they formed a flute that you can watch at URMU. In the background, you can hear its sound also from this museum. The instrument is made from mammoth ivory. It is dated to around 38,000 years old. The flute formed a long hollow tube. It is made of two halves that were glued together. It may have looked similar to this reconstruction. Making a flute from solid mammoth tusk requires much greater technical skills than making one from bird bone. Compared to the bird flutes, this flute made from mammoth tusk has a clean and clear sound over the entire range. It is worth mentioning that in the Geisen Klosterly cave an interesting mammoth ivory plate was also found. On this ivory plate the artist carved a human figure with a tail and this hybrid has raised arms. Hence the adorant, which means worshipper. This is already very interesting, but that's not all. Rows of dots were cut on the back of this flat piece possibly referring to astronomical observations. One of the arms has also carved lines, and carvings are present on both sides of the plaquette. In addition, traces of manganese and red ochre were found on the back. This plaquette is dated to approximately the same time as the flute. It is 38 mm tall and 14 mm wide, this small size is noteworthy, especially in the context of the rows of dots carved on the back of the plaquette. In the Hochlefels cave, a figurine of a therianthrope was also found. Therianthropes are hybrid creatures made up of a mixture between animal and human creatures. In this case, it's a tiny figurine of a lion man, Maybe the therianthrope from Geisen Klosterly was also the lion man. 
The Lion Man from Hochlefels is a tiny figurine. It is about 3 or maybe 2 centimeters long, made from a bone, I think from a mammoth tusk. This Lion Man was carved about 38,000 years ago, and it is a smaller version of the Lion Man from similar time, but from the cave Hochlenstein-Stadel, also in the Schwaben Alb. The bigger Lion Man is carved from mammoth tusk and it is about 30 cm tall. There is probably an important and at least an interesting idea in these representations. Three carvings in such a small area? It isn't an accidental event. Are they a representation of fiction, an imaginary world, a myth? Or maybe they are a realistic image of the ritual and the lion man is a man in a costume? Maybe a shaman? Or the carvings depict various matters? One the sacred mythical figure, perhaps a kind of spirit, and another the shaman. Another exhibit worth mentioning from the Hochlefels cave is a figurine of a water bird. It is a few centimeters long and it's very delicate. This bird was carved from mammoth ivory about 38,000 years ago. Its wings are closely pressed against its body as if it was just about to plunge into the water from high above. Subtle, beautiful figurine. I think it is worth to quote a fragment of the text from the museum in Blaubeuren. In various past cultures, water birds were considered to be messengers between the world of the living and the world of the dead. The birds ferry the dead to the other world. And during a ritual, they carry the messages of the shamans to the beyond. Archaeologists are reluctant to compare the mindset of the Paleolithic humans with that of later cultures. Some symbols, however, seem to be universally acknowledged. For example, the symbol of a bird, which is seen as a mediator between the worlds in many different religions. With this reflection, I end today's video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you don't want to miss the next content. So, till the next time, bye bye!